Good evening everybody. In this video, as always, we'll talk about the latest release of the anime scripter, the release of 1.9.11. This release will contain a couple of significant changes, as I usually say, but mainly quality of life improvements which I wanted to address, a couple of bug fixes, and as well as a couple of new features. Um, I'm going to quickly open the GitHub page. If you want to read and learn more about TAS, uh, you can always just um, open the GitHub page, the release page, and just read the whole change log. In this video, we will only talk about this part of the uh, new features and uh, maybe glance over a couple of bug fixes. But what I wanted first and foremost to talk about is the support for IOV 420p 10LE or IOV 10-bit inputs, as well as IOV 42p 8LE inputs. Basically, TS should now support a more a, a larger vari variety of inputs and should no longer crash in case of like um, more, I would say, um, pro user oriented inputs. Of course, this is not the most uh, sophisticated type of input. You will probably look at IOV 444 peep stuff. But for the time being, for the general purpose stuff, IOV 420p 10LE or IOV 10 bit should um, should suffice for the time being. Uh, hopefully in the future, I will have uh, more changes. Uh, I've also added GitHub Actions. I uh, well added, rather changed it to 3.12.7. Uh, I've upgraded PyTorch and I have upgraded TensorRT from 10.3 to 10.5. That's mainly just so that I can have a, uh, well, there are two reasons mainly. One, to have a clean sheet. So basically, if anybody uh, upgrades from a really previous version, they will start with the new engines and everything in between. I do want to mention, if you're upgrading it from an older version, open the uh, Ape Data roaming the anime scripter. There's a weights folder, delete it, and allow OTS to basically download all the models again and generate all the new engines otherwise the old engines will be kept around or uh, there will be some mismatches uh, i've changed a lot of things in terms of how tas handles engine creation model downloading and i would like not to um, fill up your hard drive with uh, random models uh, the reason why i have this approach is so that every version can be a uh, I guess standalone version in the sense that uh, you get, for example, this version and you can use it throughout um, eternity, basically. So in, at, if at any uh, similar time TS goes down or no longer gets uh, developed, that could happen one year, two years, three years from now, God knows, you can still use it just fine without any issues. But uh, we went off tangent anyway. Um, what have I also changed? Yeah, I may mentioned here that TensorRT upgrades will uh, mean that you need to regenerate all of the engines. Um, but the rest of it can be discussed here. I've fixed a couple of bugs, uh, like options not being saved, but there's, there's no point in going into that with it. Uh, UI-wise, I if you remember, there was a question mark down here. I moved it up here. It's a bit more, I guess, compact is what I want to say. I've added a new feature uh, from top to bottom. Let's go pre-render wise. I've added a delete pre-rendered file. So let me quickly explain what pre-render does. Pre-render basically takes the layer that you select, uh, pre-composes it, sends it to After Effects for rendering, uh, takes the output that After Effects generated, and then sends it to TAS for further processing, like upscaling and interpolation. What this delete pre-rendered file does basically, it just removes the pre-rendered file process so that you don't have extra stuff laying around. For this test, let's do a deduplicate and pre-render obviously and run it. I should have it here, it popped up, it's being currently processed. And when it's done processing, it will remove the file. This is just so that um, I guess you can save up on storage, especially if you don't need a pre-rendered file post-process. This way you can just um, have it laying around. I do want to mention that this only and only works if there's any other process available or active here. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything. Uh, for example, here we've processed, we pre-rendered the file and it still sticks around. I'm sorry. Um, 
what have I've added uh, in this regard? Nothing much here. Um, let me see. Oh yeah. So denoise has been renamed to restore, uh, just so that there's a more, I guess, umbrella-like term for um, for TAS. Because denoise was not really a fitting name because I was adding uh, multiple type of things to it that weren't necessarily denoise oriented only. I've added, for example, GLPI KSR uh, for DJ pack purposes. Uh, I've also added in this version, uh, the GDJ pack was added previously, like a couple, a couple of versions ago, but anyway, anyway, fixer was added. It's made by, uh, I don't want to botch his name. Um, Zarx Rex. I'm sorry if I'm botching it, but it's a sharp and decompress. Uh, if I remember correctly, the wording was anyways, mastered at 720p. This basically tries to upscale it and do some magic with it so that it looks more like natural 1080p it's not going to be a uh best for best model ever it it does what it's supposed to do and it does a quite a great job i'm not going to showcase it in this case but uh i also did a tensor rt version for um nvidia rtx users obviously uh, interpolate wise, what has been added? I've added a little, um, uh, the word for it is contextual help, but just basically a toolbar or rather, uh, some, some notification for you, just so you know what Rife Assemble does. I've added Rife Lexor. I'm going to rename it to 4.7 to Lexor. This is, uh, a modification to the original architecture. It's supposedly going to generate better quality. I haven't tested it quite well, but uh, quite much, sorry, but yeah, it's there. You can try it and let me know if it works for you, if it does a better job than um, than other models. I removed 4.17, there was no purpose in keeping it. 4.18 does a better job, same for 42 and 45. So yeah, it was just a no reason, a no-brainer to keep it. I will keep 4.6 for, um, for because of the fact that it's the fastest model, as far as I know. But yeah, I mean, in terms of these, that's basically all I've added in interpolation. Uh, upscale wise, have I added anything new? I don't believe so. No, that's everything the same. Sharpen stays the same. In encoding, I've added, well, I faced the 16 bit problems, hopefully. Uh, I've added X small files or extra small file size. Basically, this is slow x264 and slow x265. These are some presets that I've made. Um, based on a couple of references and honestly a bit of chat GPT here and there. Uh, it should provide really, really small file sizes. That's basically what it is meant for, but it's really slow to encode. So only use it coupled if you have like some really slow process or if you really, really need it. Otherwise, probably don't and just keep doing X64 animation or something. It's there, you can use it, why not? But yeah, I added the option and feel free to try it out. I believe it's quite slow, but maybe it serves a purpose for somebody. Uh, in the extra tab. So you will see a bunch of changes here. Mainly, I've added a few, couple of few features. Uh, let's go from bottom to top because I want to finish with get anime video a bit later. Open TAS folder. All it does, it basically opens the location of TAS's backend and where the weights are and TAS folder and everything in between. So you can just quickly delete them, move them and do whatever you wish with them. Uh, check for this is the same. Offline mode is the same. I added the purge cache. This is basically the same as doing edit purge all cache and then just removing it. So let me just show it to you. Let's uh, render a bit. If I do purge cache, boom, it, it does that basically automatically. It just saves you a couple of clicks and it's nice to have feature, I guess. Uh, extra depth map stayed the same. I didn't, I wanted to add a new model. It was depth pro from Apple, but it doesn't quite play well. And yeah, we need to play more with it to, to get it to work. But yeah, eventually I would like to have that pro as well in TAS if possible. Uh, yeah, let's talk about get anime video. Uh, this is probably the biggest change or biggest new feature. What it basically does, there's a thing called animepy.cli, sorry, animepy 
uh, middle slash middle middle line whatever it is CLI that I basically wrapped around in TAS uh, it uses their API you can click it do for example and the anime you wish to download so Naruto I want Naruto I want episode one in this case and it will quickly download it for you give it just a few seconds it's not the fastest thing in the world but eventually you will have the first episode of Naruto right at your disposal to edit and do whatever you wish to do with it obviously uh, let's not get too technical about the legalities of this it just wraps another tool if it gets taken down TS will um, obviously remove it so use it while you can I don't want to mention this is still in beta um, I'm not sure if it works with every input every every model a model every anything you want to mention uh, I'm still playing with it but technically it should be pretty foolproof for now um, it defaults to dubbed only uh, because of the fact that subbed animes are um, hard-coded in the or sorry burned they have the subtitles burned into them and if you want to edit and do stuff with it I believe you would not want to have the uh, subtitles burned into the video and it would look ugly so yeah we, we switched to dubbed for now we eventually should be uh, coupled with subs only or like disabled subs so it's only the raw anime but yeah for now it serves the purpose I believe but that's pretty much it I guess that's the new features I don't believe I've added anything new and significant uh yeah anyway thank you for um for coming on vts thank you for watching this video and thank you for um all the support so far it's been great i've seen a couple of uh, community feedbacks as well as a couple of videos from other people talking about depth maps and what ts has to offer and it's been quite nice to see that people actually recognize it and that they started using it anyway uh have a wonderful evening talk to you later